Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. It's Saturday, the 4th of May, 2024. Okay, that bit didn't really rhyme. Welcome. The website is letmeboreyou.com. That's the podcast website. But you could also reach. Uh, excuse me. You could gain access to the podcast, Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast, all over the place. Apple Podcasts, um, SoundCloud is kind of the main home of the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast. But letmeboreyou.com is the website. So there, there you go. Oh, so, oh yeah, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I, 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 I'm recording this a lot earlier than normal because there's boxing on tonight, well, early hours of the morning, tomorrow morning. Well, that's weird. Things are moving on their own. I think it's gravity. Parts of me is definitely being affected by gravity these days. My bosom used to be much firmer. So, I decided to make this recording earlier. And I'm a bit fresher. I'm a bit, ooh, you know. Still tired. I always yawn at the beginning of these recordings. I stopped yawning after a little while, but I just, I don't know what it is. It's sort of getting myself into the the boring zone because it might be hard for you to believe. I'm an, an incredibly excitable and exciting person most of the time. So I have to tone down that excitement and that bubbling personality that winning <laughs> that winning character in order to present myself as being boring tedious whatever uh, talking quite slowly because normally I talk a million miles an hour and I'm just honestly just the life and soul of any room Admittedly, the only rooms I'm in are me and Vinny, but what's he doing? Hey, Vinny, give me that. He's got a chocolate. I don't know how he got that. You can't eat that, mate. No, you can't eat it. You're not allowed. A bounty bar, like a little, mini, you know, the little miniature bounty bar, still in a wrapper, has managed to get on the floor, and I don't know why. How it managed to do that. And he was starting to rip it open. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not the only bit of chocolate. He's, oh God, he's going nutty trying to get to it. You can't have that, Vinny. You're not allowed to eat chocolate. It's poisonous for doggies. And I'm not going to... He's eaten chocolate before. No doubt he has. But I've never given him chocolate. But when we're out, especially at night, I can't see always what he's picking up from the floor. And because I live quite close to a school, so often there's sweets and chocolates and crisps and, I don't know, you might call it candy and snacks and stuff on the floor. Just little bits on the floor. And he, he well, him and probably every other dog that goes past, he'll probably have a little, little, little munch on them. I try and uh, stop it, but I do my best. I do my best for my little boy. You know, it's it's hard to be perfect all the time. So, oh, you want the stats for the... I'll tell you what, instead of giving you the stats for the podcast, I'm going to give you the stats for my YouTube. How about that one? Whoa, okay. Um, a 
let's have a look. Oh, two seconds. Just get in it. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Okay, there it is. Okay. My latest podcast episode, number 1110, Q&A Friday, which was yesterday. I recorded it yesterday and I released it this morning. Ooh, my armpits are sweaty. You didn't need to know that, did you? Um, some things are best kept inside, I guess, but do you know what I've noticed? And this is, I don't know, this is, this is bad maybe, I'm not sure. I've got some friends who are, I don't really see them so much. I've got, I've got very few people that I see regularly. In fact, the people I see most are the dog walkers, and I don't know one of their names. Well, no one, no, I kind of know one name. Um, but it's, I found myself nearly saying something to one of my friends. Is she's, I think she's kind of coming to the end of a relationship and she started, we talked in that and she started uh, sort of, sent me a text, how was your day? I'm like, what? How was my day? I don't, I don't get texts like that. I don't just, just, and I wanted to text back. If you want to know how my day was, listen to my podcast. I didn't text that back, but I was like, well, I'm not going to have a conversation on the phone about my day if I'm going to talk about it on the podcast. I can't have that same conversation twice. For me, I'll talk about the day and then it's forgotten and I can move on with the rest of my life. <laughs> Just I've talked about today or what happened yesterday or this morning and then it's done. And we can all just breathe a sigh of relief. What is it? Oh, now he's eating a ginger nut biscuit. He's got food there, so I don't know why he's not eating his food. He's got dry food over there as well. He's not eating that. I think he, if he's not got sugar in it, he don't want it. And, mm, you know what I mean? Mm, no. He's taken after me, I think. Anyway, 1110, so that's a Q&A Friday. I uploaded it today, so I made, I uploaded the podcasts, did all that stuff, edited, pod, processed on everything. So I made a video, eight views. Yesterday's video got nine views. <laughs> I'm amazed, honestly. I know it's not like a huge amount in the past, but at my height, I was getting 45,000 views um, a month. And it was growing by like probably 10% every month. It was just really sort of growing. And that's when I deleted my YouTube channel. Bless me. Yep. I always did the cleverest things. What, what are the stats? You don't want the stats, do you? Okay. Podcast. I'll just give you the, quickly give you the stats for this. Let me probably sleep. Podcast. Yesterday I ended up with four thousand eight hundred ninety nine plays. Today so far at four o'clock now in the evening or in the afternoon, three thousand and nineteen plays. So the one thing that does surprise me a little bit is how many. Not on this podcast so much, but. I'm surprised that it's gone up. I'm not surprised, but I'm happy that it's gone up. But on the other podcast, the... I forget what it's called. Sleeping Deeply, is it? S sleep Deep Hypnosis. Sleep. Sleeping Deeply. Hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply. Okay. So I've had 5,868 plays today. Yesterday I had twelve thousand two hundred forty-nine. So, 
what what I'm surprised about is how many plays of the Let Me Boy to Sleep I get. So just yesterday, yesterday, uh, I mean t today's recording is yesterday's recording, but yesterday's upload, which was from the day before, which was seventies TV. I mean, the one without music, 357 plays. With music, 358. 5 hours, 866. 10 hours, 687. And so far today, the Q&A Friday, 180 without music, 225 with music, 250, 5 hours, 10 hours, 331. I don't know. I just, I just find it quite surprising uh, that they seem to be. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So the last seven days, ordering Vinny's new lead. One thousand ninety-two. That in that ten-hour version, that was the most listened to recording. Nine hundred, nine hundred fifty-eight. And uh, the last 30 days, most listened to recording was, oh, ordering Vinny's lead, 10 hours, 1,092 again. But it was 1,370 plays. Number two was a 10 hour version of Jason's Bedtime Story, number 29, A Cinderellish Story, 929. Ah. Blimey. And, uh, Let's have a quick, quick drink of water. What I will before I, before I continue with my amazing stories of intriguement and fascination, I do have a message, a message sent to me. I'm going to read it out. Um, and it's uh, from Georgie. It says, Hey, I've been listening to you for four years straight now, every night. You're an absolute godsend, and I'm able to switch my overactive brain off for long enough to go to sleep because of you. I cannot thank you enough. And, and I did reply, Georgie, thank you for your kind words. This is why I do what I do. That's so lovely, honestly. I woke up to that this morning. And, um... Wait a minute. Oh. I thought I'd... I'd it's... I thought I'd sent a different message. Do you ever send a message to a wrong person? I did that once. I sent a message to my stepmum. I forget what it was. It was, um, I think I was talking to a female. And I sent a message to her. I think it was someone I was dating at the time. And so I sent a message. She sent me a message and I sent a message back. But somehow, and I don't know how, I sent it. Instead of to her, I sent it to my stepmom. And she sent a reply back. So why have you why it is it said, why have you sent me a picture of a little worm? It's like I I'm just I said oh, I've just been gardening. So I just I know you're into gardening. She said, Oh, okay. That was it, thankfully. Um so I I uh did I 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 did I've been thinking about my pet peeves one of the questions yesterday on my Q&A Friday was what is my pet peeve and I mentioned speeding cars and I come to realize that a lot of my pet peeves seem to be around cars and I didn't it's it's got me thinking I've started to notice maybe become a little bit self-aware of how grumpy I am when it comes to certain aspects of driving and the road and stuff. One thing that 
I do have a pet. One of my pet peeves is people that don't indicate when they turn a corner. Again, I'm not talking about pedestrians. I'm talking about cars. Uh, people on bikes as well, but I rarely see a person on a bike around here. Or even motorbikes, to be fair. It's just generally cars. And I don't know. It's, it's because they, they're turning left or they're turning right onto the estate and there's not a lot of cars about. And they can, I guess because they can see there's no traffic. But to me, that's not the point. Because if you turning right and turning left is an automatic process that you kind of become used to doing it's not something you think about really is it it's like if you're going to turn right you automatically have the indicator on to turn right and turn left and it's something that happens automatically it's it's like you don't put attention into the clutch or into um different gears or you know it's i mean i'm i realize i'm not a driver but i know enough about humans and it's the same with anything we do it's like if you there's some there's certain things that we do without having to really put a lot of attention into which makes me wonder how can people turn that off on and off at will the automatic process is on and off how are they able to just not indicate when 99.9% .9 of the time they have to indicate because they could get caught out or they could cause problems and on the odd occasion when they can see they feel like they don't need to because they're you know literally 10 seconds away from their home and they're just turning left and then they're going to drive onto the driveway maybe or they're just going to drive around the estate and they can see there's no cars coming but it's or they can see there's no car coming towards them. The thing is, I think drivers forget that the indicator is not just they get an indicator. They're not indicating for themselves. I mean, they're indicating to let other drivers and uh, and pedestrians and other people know what their intention is. It's it keeps them safe because then the other drivers will stop if they don't have right away you know and let that driver go park go around or whatever it is i mean even crossing the road there's if i get to the end of the estate and the petrol station's on the left so i get to the end and i have to cross a main road not only do i have to cross the main road but sometimes so i have to cross it in two parts so when this car's coming towards me on the right hand side, which in this country they come on a day drive on the right hand side, and by that I mean in both ways, the right hand side and the correct side. And mm, sometimes people indicate to turn left into the estate. Now, I think a lot of people and I've done it myself and I know people that I've been with in and just they've gone to walk across the road I don't because I've been caught out too many times just because someone's indicating don't mean they're turning just because they're not indicating don't mean they're not turning and it's the same way as when people stop or they slow down doesn't mean they're slowing down to let you cross doesn't even know that doesn't mean they've even seen you they might be looking at their phone might be looking down at the phone texting especially if the if the traffic's slow i've seen people not even see me they're literally just looking down and stopping and starting and sometimes just come to a halt and they're clearly doing something on their phone well, i can see their hand moving and i can't see what they're doing but and in traffic and it's like okay so I, I i had a friend and he's like well just walk across they're they're slowing down we don't know why they're slowing down and a few times we both got caught out 
went to cross over, the car sped up. Now, that's... I'm not saying it's okay with young people, but you know, as far as reactions, young people have a quicker reaction. You know, 30 years ago, I'm not saying I could outrun a car, obviously, but when I was younger, I, I was stupid. I'd run across the road and, you know, generally was okay. But now, I'm not quite as young as I used to be. And it's not that I'm, I really, I need to get my head in, in gear to stop thinking of myself as being old, because I'm not old. I'm old, er, uh, it's the er uh bit. And then er uh, hasn't got a, a particularly positive connotation in the UK, in England, it likes in the language. Because quite often when someone sees something that they find disgusting, they go, er. Uh, so I'm not, not only am I old, I'm also old, Ugh. see, so it's kind of, I don't know, it's almost worse than just being old. Being elderly, I feel that demands a degree of respect, elderly, someone that you take care of, someone you look out for, old, again, maybe someone that, um, it's a less respectful of than saying elderly. I would I would say, and not not everyone likes being called old. Why would they? But old, ugh. that's gonna be stuck in your that's gonna be stuck in your head now, isn't it? Old, ugh. <laughs> old, ugh. I'm old, ugh. he's older than me. Yeah, oh never thought of it that way before so cars will slow down and then speed up and I've been caught out a couple of times and I'm not doing that no more and I see some cars slow down and bearing in mind I'm not just on my own I mean I used to be with my friend he had a big dog uh for quite a few years I had Andre and he was on the lead as well although I think I might have picked him up when we crossed the road I can't remember but people can see that they can see they got two people with animals and you know anyone that's ever had a dog or they know that they're not always they don't always do what you expect them to do you know, it's it's quite. Vinny tripped me up on the stairs the other day. Admittedly, it was pitch black down on the on the hallway, so I couldn't see anything. But I did have my um, I had my torch on. A flashlight. Uh, I'm really catering for America, aren't I? Flashlight. We don't call them flashlights. Torches. I suppose it's from the old... I don't know where you get a flashlight from. I suppose because they used to flash and they do... Technically, do they just keep flashing? But it's so quick, I don't know. But torches... If you go back to the old days when people used to have torches, which were literally just like a a burning bush with a handle. And they used to walk around. You see all the old movies. The Harry Harry Horror? Harry Horror? Hammer Horror? Or... Well, just lots of the old movies from like London and stuff, and even America and other countries, they'd have these things, and I think maybe they'd have oil in them, and they'd just be a light before lamps and oil lamps and stuff like that. So we just, I guess, continued to call them torches because it was the up whatever updated version came along. We just continued to call it a torch. Yeah. I haven't really given that one much thought before. Hopefully I never will again. So I... I used to say to my friend, just... Let's just wait for the traffic. Because if you do walk out 
and the person I mean first if they don't see you catastrophe if they do see you and they stop might be okay for you but it could be catastrophe for the car behind so like let's just could we just wait sometimes you just like walk out and they'd have to like pull the brakes on it's like I can't do that I'm not I'm not taking that risk so I I'm gonna learn to be honest I mean I'm not going into details but when I was about five because uh, I lived in a, the children's home in South End, and there was a main road outside very busy main road big road as well especially if you're when you're little and we used to run across it and one of my friends didn't make it one day well, who I was living with in the kids home so that always kind of stuck with me a bit it's like be careful of the road I didn't need the green cross code because I won't be there when you cross the road. Green cross code road, yeah. Did you know about, did you have that in other countries? Because in, in England, I don't know if they had it in Scotland or Wales or anywhere else, I don't know. But in England, especially where I lived, because that's where my television was, there was an advert called, it was the green cross code man. And this big muscular man was saying it was helping people across the road, children and elderly people and stuff. And maybe some people are old. Uh, uh. And he'd, he'd say, he was a Green Cross Code man. He'd say, always use the Green Cross Code, which was look right, look left, look right, look left again, then, then run, no, no, then cross, always looking. Just make sure that, you know, it's safe. And he would say that was his little rhyme, his little poem. Always use the Green Cross Code. Because I won't be there. No. Always use the Green Cross Code. Because I might... No. Always remember to use the Green Cross Code. Because I might not be there when you cross the road. Something like that. Always use a green cross code because I won't be there when you cross the road. So it's like he was letting us know that although he was there for us in our living room at home on the television, he wasn't able to <laughs> you know, he wasn't able to be at every single roadside helping people to cross the road. Couldn't be everywhere. And I thought that was that was good for him to share that information because you know, I didn't see the whole advert the first time and I was waiting for him to turn up. Even the lollipop man said, oh, come on, I'll, I can stop the traffic. I've got me lollipop. Uh, and he would stop the traffic. I said, no, I'm waiting for the Green Cross Code man. And he said, what? I said, I'm waiting for the Green Cross Code man. He said, he's busy filming Star Wars. I said, what? What do you mean? Oh, never mind. Come on, you can cross over. I've got, the, I've got a lollipop. That's much better than a green cross code. I said, okay. You haven't got to look right or left. You can just cross over. Really? Yeah. Well, can you, can you be here? Are you here every day? He said, yeah. Because it was a new school I just started. I'm here every day. What about Saturdays? He said, not Saturdays. Because schools aren't open on Saturdays. What about Sundays? Well, not Sundays. Schools aren't open on Sundays either. What about bank holidays? Bank holiday Mondays. Well, no, schools aren't open on bank holiday Mondays. What about Easter? No, schools aren't holiday. They're not open, open at Easter or either are we. Schools aren't open. They're not open. Christmas? No, schools aren't open at Christmas. What about the summer holidays? You mean the six weeks when the schools are closed? Yeah, what about that? No. What about half term? No. When the schools are closed, no. And I said, well, why did you say you were always here every day? 
He said, I didn't mean every day. I said, well, you did say you're here every day. That's when I realised that I was pedantic. And it's put me in good stead to be one of the most annoying men on the planet. <laughs> I, I can turn my pedanticism on and off at choice. And sometimes, well, it's not always at choice. Sometimes it just kicks in on its own accord. But if you get into a pedantic mood, you, you everything someone says, you can just pull them up on it because people contradict themselves so easily and they trip up. And also a lot of people will just blatantly lie. It's like, no, actually, or exaggerate. A lot of it, not so much lying, although it is sometimes, but exaggerations. I mean, you know me. I would never lie. The whole 35 years that I've been making these Let Me Boy to Sleeps, I've never lied once. I don't even know how to spell it. I-T. <laughs> no, I know how to spell it. That was very childish. That's a childish joke. Um... I was just thinking of some of the really dumb things we used to do when we were kids. Um, but some things that I didn't do. Um, anyway, I can't tell you about all of them. <sighs> I'd like to. Another thing I noticed. Oh yeah, if people flash their lights, so they slow down and flash their lights, that is, they're going cross and every time I cross the road I put my hand out I mean some could say it's like a, a Nazi salute it's not I'm basically I'm waving to them but I'm just letting them know and I watch them the whole time I cross so I'm waving it probably looks a bit silly to them but I just have to like just I want them to see me because the stuff on telly I want to watch, you know, I want to get home. So, the other thing that I forgot about my pet peeves, this is going to be about my pet peeves today, I think. Yeah, I think I've got no choice. I think it's going to be pet peeves, pet peeves. Cars parked on the pavement. I have a real issue with that. Now, I don't really know what the law is for that, to be honest. I don't know. I asked a traffic warden the other day. They turned up here outside the school the first time, I think, in nine years that I've lived here. And it was two of them. One was hiding in the bushes and the other one was uh, hiding underneath a car. And I was... I said, oi. He said, what? I said, can I ask you a question? He said, no, we're trying to catch people out here. Why do you think I'm hiding in the bushes? So people can, when they park their car, we can give them a ticket and I can get a uh, commission and I'll be a hero in the office. I said, it's all right, I'll, I'll climb into the bushes with you. He said, there's not enough room. I said, come on, there's always room for a small one. Which brings me to that. Why is it? And I'm coming from someone that isn't. I'm not particularly small myself. Okay. So I'm not. I'm not. Judging. I'm just pointing out. Something that I've noticed. Over the years. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Why is it? When. It's two people sitting on a sofa. Okay, technically the sofa's supposedly big enough for three. Not really. I mean, who wants to sit next to each other, really? I mean, if I'm on a sofa, I'll sit one end and I'll have as much of a gap as possible. Unless the other person, you know, if I'm in a relationship with them, like, that'd be different. But even then, um, I don't know. I forget it's been so long. 
but I don't want to be too close to them, to be honest. But really, I think a sofa, a three-seater sofa, unless it's massive, would probably be for two adults and a little kid, probably a family sofa. There'd be enough room for a little kid or for a dog in the middle. And that'd be it. I've noticed, and I'm not saying every time, but every time, whenever I've been sitting on a sofa and someone else is sitting on the other end of the sofa and I'm thinking, good, please, you know, maybe it's uh, <laughs> at a meeting that I've gone to or something, I don't know, I don't want to go into details of that, nothing weird, just, but it's just somewhere that I'm at and I'm sort of just having to be you know, sitting on a sofa, which is weird. Guaranteed to hear a voice. Room for a little one. And so far, I don't know how to put this. So far, it's never been a little one. It's always, it's, I mean, once the city actually tipped over um, in protest, it was, I mean, three of me would be too much. Probably two of me would be too, too much on a sofa now. But, you know, the other end was quite, it wasn't a lot. I mean, at one point I was the other person, the other end of the sofa was tipping up because I'm so heavy but I would never do that you know I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm aware enough to know that if there's two people sitting either end of a sofa I'm not going to say room for a little one because that's not fair on them the last thing they're going to want to do is see my big bum heading towards them as I bend over to like sit down that's not fair no one wants to no one wants to see that. <laughs> it's just it's, it's like trying to squeeze into the middle, so like, you know. It's it's literally it's like trying to trying to park a lorry in a disabled um parking space, you know, it's just it's not enough room, that's what I'm saying. Um uh, or any any space in a car in a car park really it doesn't have to be disabled space. But I'm just thinking sometimes the disabled spaces have the the barriers like the metal barriers, so people can't. Do they? I might be making that bit up. Anyway, my pet peeve. One of my pet peeves is parking on the pavement. And do you feel I should have a pizza tonight? I got. I do have a pizza in the in the fridge, the freezer. Oh, I messed up. I paid my bills, and I just left myself. I didn't have. I went to the petrol station. I didn't have enough money for the stuff I wanted to get. It's like oh, it's a little bit embarrassing because I had to. There's a new bloke working there, and he was just training, and he had to uh, dis take off one of the items. And he'd never done it before, so the manager was behind him, showing him what to do. And it's like I, I, I had to say to him, "Look, I'm sorry about that. I know what it's like. You know, when you get a fir you get your first job, not your first job, but the first week of the of the job, you'll get the most awkward situations you're ever going to probably get. The till will break down. There'll be a power cut. There'll be awkward customers. or all kinds of stuff that." you probably never ever have again, all in the first week. It's just, it's a weird one. I don't know why that is, but it was the same in the call centers. And they said that to us, you know, you'll have the most awkward customers of your entire time working here, all in one week. It's not not that you won't have any others, but you'll never have a week like this because 
but then a lot of it is people are asking stuff that in six months time I'll be able to answer instantly but I don't know the answer and this bloke would be able to delete the item within seconds and it might be an issue but he doesn't know how to do that yet so it's it's even little things can seem complicated can't they but I said to him sorry about that I wouldn't do that to anyone because I've been in your situation he said what you used to work here did you I said no no it's stupid I don't work there why would I work here he said well it's a job I said hardly I said no I didn't I said um because I used to work in a not a petrol station but I've worked in um retail I used to work in a co-op behind the counter and I was useless at the job I wasn't so bad at stacking the shelves that was fairly easy um doing the bread and stuff like that in the morning yes it's, it wasn't that complicated but back in them days, there was no beep, beep, beep like that. You know, we just scanned the po the barcodes. Everything had prices on them. They had to put the price into the till. And I was just charging people the wrong amount of money constantly. And people would come in and buy their week's shopping. And it must have been frustrating for them. The thing is, I was never doing it to cause problems. You know, I wasn't doing it on purpose. And it's not like I was keeping the money in my pocket. Although, when I was there, the tools were going short. And I did start to get blamed for that. And I said, look, I'm not... They didn't have cameras either in them days. <laughs> Could you believe it? It co op It was like 1987. There's no cameras. I don't know. I don't think there was any cameras. Um, and I, I said, look, just, I'm not a thief. I'm just really rubbish at the job. That's all. In the end, they took me off the till when it was really busy. I was on the till when it was quiet. But during the peak periods, they took me off the till because I was just, I wasn't great. Do you know what, right? Here's two things that I never, never understood. When I was working there, I had two experiences of women or girls that I didn't, could not get my head around, even today. Right. So I was 17. I'd already done two years in a chip shop. So 17, already been at work for two years. And this was April 1980, no, it was 1988, not 87, 88. Cause I started working in 86. Started working in March 86. And uh, this was April 88. So I started working there. And I still remember the area manager was called Mr. Cook. And he was not the friendliest little man in the world. Just, I don't know what was so about him. He just wasn't, he didn't like me, I don't think. He didn't like me. I think it's because I kept putting him on my knee and pretending he was a ventriloquist <laughs> dummy. I didn't. And why am I thinking that? That's really weird. You pick up your boss and put him on your knee pretending he's a ventriloquist dummy that's something that's never really going to happen is it bearing in mind he was probably bigger than me but shorter than me i think but you know probably heavier <laughs> that's weird um anyway he, he used to come and give me appraisals and it's like he said you're not doing very well so i know that tell me something i don't know he said there's money going missing i know he said uh I thought, he said, I want to ask you, and this is in confidence. I thought he was going to ask me if I, if I knew who was taking the money. I said, okay. He said, it won't go out of this room. 
I said, okay, and you'll be anonymous. I thought, all right, fair enough. I didn't really know where I was going, but I, I figured it was about the money. Well, he said it was about the money, so it wasn't a guess. And uh, I didn't necessarily, like, I, you know, I thought he was going to ask me if I knew who it was because there was about five members of staff there, a couple of part-timers and the rest were full-time. And so I'm waiting for him to start asking that question. He said, uh, is it you? It's what, me? Are you the one stealing the money? I said, what? He said, are you still... I said, no. Why would I steal the money? Because to be honest, it didn't even occur to me until that point. When I got home, I started thinking, oh, maybe I will. But it's like, I just didn't... Why would I steal the money? I mean, when I was in the chip shop and I had no money, pretty much, to spend, of my own to spend, at one point, £40 rent, and I was earning, I was taking home £47 a week. £7 for food, laundry, everything, which even in 1987 wasn't a lot. So... And I used to carry the takings to the bank. I used to take the takings to the bank. And I'd be cashing up the till sometimes. Because he trusted me. And I wasn't... I didn't take any money. Never once did I take one penny. And... I suppose I could have done. In fact, I think the tills did go short a few times. But I was never... No one ever... I don't think ever suspected me because... It's just, it's just, I don't know, just nothing, I, I wouldn't, it's just not my thing, you know. We've all got our own little things we like to do, and it's just not one of my things I like to do. But I'd probably have more money if I did, but never been a, never been wanting to steal in money. I have been accused, so I was, I wasn't so much accused of the co-op, but they were querying it, they were definitely wondering if it was me is it you is it you is it and no and the tills were short it wasn't me I said the only thing it could be is if I've given the wrong change that's possible uh, but I tried to be quite good with that because I, I, I thing is I would charge people the wrong amount the wrong amount of stuff okay that's a fact. I would charge people the wrong amount because I'd add it up wrongly on the till, which is basically just a calculator with a drawer where you put money in. So I'd add up stuff wrong. So maybe I'd charge someone, I don't know, £26 instead of £22 or £26 instead of £28. Or, you know, it might be, I don't know, above or below, whatever. But whatever money they gave me went into the till. So even though I was making mistakes, there was no financial gain to me. It was just incompetence, pure incompetence from my part. And I learned quite early when I did, I worked in a chip shop. We had tills, exactly the same thing. You put in the price and you take the money. And the first thing I learned is you put the £20 notes and the £10 notes in the correct places because then if someone says i gave you a 10 like 10 20 pound note 10 pound note and five pound note and one pound coins but the notes always make sure you always put the notes in the right place so when you close your till and someone says wait a minute i gave you 10 pound and i'd only given them change from a five pound i could open the till look in the five pound compartment if there was a £10 note in the £5 compartment, then that was done. Sorry. And it was sorted. There you go. There's your £10. And they'd walk out. <laughs> they'd walk out with like, made a profit of about £6 because I forget to take the other £5 back. But forgetting that, it's, uh, it was just an obvious thing. If the money wasn't in the correct, if it was all correct, then sometimes we'd have to wait and we'd have to, I think my boss would have to 
cash up there and then to see. But it's, it's not worth it for a couple of pound anyway. But uh, if someone's ordered like 20 quid's worth of stuff. Because 20 pound was a fair amount back then. <clears throat> so yeah, we had um, money go missing. I think one person got, I think they got sacked for stealing, I think. But I, I never, yeah, I got accused of stealing. So I got kind of accused or suspected at the co-op. And it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And then I worked in a bar again. This was the same year, 88 Christmas, 1988. And again, same thing, tills, no cameras, and no proper tills. You had to put everything in. And I added stuff up in my head was never the easiest thing. I mean, over the years, two years of doing it and the fish and chips being, I kind of, I started to get used to the prices, if you know what I mean. If someone ordered fish and chips or cotton chips and, or pasty, I kind of knew what things were and I, it, it became part of my brain a little bit. With the work in the pub, that was different. And I, I remember I, I was struggling to sleep because I kept adding stuff up in my head while I was asleep, while I was trying to sleep. Because it was just, yeah, I didn't enjoy it. They accused me of stealing because there's money going missing. And I pointed out that, again, I might be incompetent and I was charging people wrong amounts of money but whatever money they gave me I put into the till and some people were so silly they'd be getting cheap drinks all night long so I'd be charging them maybe £7 for £10 worth of drinks by mistake by just adding up wrong and then have like 5 rounds and the 6th round I'll charge them £7 or maybe whatever, the right price, and they'd complain to the manager. And then the manager would come along and he'd add it all up and he's because there's complaining, how come he's charging me he's charging me seven pound or ten pound now instead of seven pound? And it's it has been seven pound for this round all all night. And the manager or the assistant manager would add it all up and saying, Well it's supposed to be ten pound. So you've got a good deal. You've had five rounds. For and now they're so stupid. Why complain? If they knew they were getting a good deal, what did they think that was going to happen by complaining that I was I was charging the right amount of money? But they were probably drunk by then anyway. But it was so. D I, I said that was really silly of you. He said, "What do you say?" I said, "It's really silly of you." I mean, you just got. A really cheap night because of my incompetence. He said, "What did you say?" And uh, one of his mates said, "Sorry, he's got hearing issues. He forgot to bring his hearing aids out." I said, "Okay, I didn't realise." Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, and he said, "Who said that? Who said that? What did you say? Who said that?" And he sort of said, says, "Sorry, he's, he forgot his glasses." He's <laughs> I'm being silly now. I'm, I'm moving on. Um, <laughs> oh dear this is my Saturday afternoon mood oh dear, 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 dear anyway here's the weird thing at the co-op I'm living above the shop at this point renting off the manager And she's she lives up there. That's she's got the she gets it part of her job, and I, I she gives she lets me move into the spare room. It's, things are quite good actually, for and it was it's weird because I was I was more often late for work now than I was when I lived around the corner when I had to travel. But it, it was good. Yeah, it was quite nice to to live close. Anyway. I'm going to come to the to the girls in a minute because that was what I started this off. I want to talk about weird experiences. 
I could speak for a year about weird experiences with females that I had, but I won't. And I'm sure each of those individual women could speak probably for about three years about the weird experiences with me. So let's not do tit for tat. Excuse the pun. And he, she, okay, basically what happened is the co-op took this very seriously about the money going missing. Because it wasn't little amounts. It was much more than little. Like it was, I don't know, it wasn't just pennies. That's what I mean. And they came in, the police came in one day and took away the manager. Like arrested her and took her away. Who was my, my landlord. Or landlady, whatever you want to call her. And like, what the hell's going on here? And turned out it was her. Now, they didn't have cameras because they could have seen it with a camera, couldn't they? Although I think she might have uh, blocked the camera out, but because if you had a back to the camera, I don't know. But basically, they sent CID in. That's the same thing as FBI, I think, over here. Or maybe it was the CID. CID? FBI? Was it FBI? I don't know. Send the FBI in anyway. And undercover. And what they did is they gave her a marked note. And it was a £20 note or something like that. Maybe it was a £50 note. Probably, I don't think we saw many £50 notes in them days. So a £20 note probably, I don't know. Anyway, they marked it, and by marked, they didn't make a hole in it or anything. They, I think, they probably used some kind of special pen that could be seen underneath ultraviolet light, something like that. And they bought something, purchased something. She was behind the till. Uh, they maybe they'd been in a few times and done it with different people, different members of staff. But anyway, they gave it. They gave it to her. Apparently there's another one of the plain clothes people were standing in the queue or the standing watching her while she was doing that and they saw that she put it in her pocket. Now the person behind the counter, you know, the customer couldn't see that but this person was standing in a way that they could see it. Well, they came in about 10 minutes later with the police and uh, searched a handbag and they basically pulled out the money I know so okay, can you empty your, what your handbag in that and she said what are you doing what's going on so they said well we believe that you've uh, stolen you're stolen some money. She said, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't. And the manager. And they said, we know you're the manager. That's why it's quite serious. And uh, they, they, she said, well, we don't have cameras. So you couldn't have seen me on a camera because cameras haven't been put into supermarkets yet. Not around here, at least, because we're in the countryside. And she said, yeah, I realize that. Uh, they should probably be around for about two or three years. I'll be everywhere. Do you think so? Yes, I do. Oh. Uh, what about the internet? When do you think that will come along? Oh, we've got about ten years before that comes along. Oh. What about AI? I oh, didn't get me started on AI. I mean, you're not going to believe the upheaval that's going to cause people. And no one's going to know what to believe anymore. You know, there'll be images and pictures. There'll be actually, there'll actually be videos of Donald Trump and Putin having a having a wrestling match. And some people will believe it's true. Some people will believe it's fake. Who's Putin and who's, who's Trump? Don Donald Duck. Do, do, what Trump? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's, he's going to be the president and the other one is the the king of uh, Russia. Oh. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to look into the future. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we have to check your money. How are you going to do that? All money's the same. Or well, it's the £20 notes. Well, I know £20 notes are different from £10 notes, but all £20 notes are the same. She said, ah, but we, we've, we've marked the notes. We believe that you've got a marked note inside your handbag, in, the, in your purse. She said, how can you tell that? How can you tell this marked? And she said, because of this, she reached out in a bag. And she just froze. It was like a scene from Narnia, honestly. Like, remember the, when they freeze, she freezes animals and stuff into stone. Or is it ice? Is it stone or ice? I can't remember. But anyway, and he's like, oh, what do you mean, oh? I forgot it. Have you got it? And the other CID, FBI agent said, Got what? You know, the, the thingy. The thingy? Yeah. Ultraviolet thing. The, the light. Uh, no. I thought you had it. No, I haven't got it. I thought it was in the bag, but it's not. Uh, don't know. Oh, wait a minute. I think I left it in the car. Uh, can you go and get it then, please? You're not my boss. We're equal here. You're not in charge of me. You don't tell me what to do. Especially not in front of people in a supermarket. Okay, John, we'll talk about this when we get home over dinner. Okay. So, um, they brought it in and they, they showed that it was the money. She, she had loads of notes in there that, that, um, Well, she just had loads of notes in there. They weren't marked, but she had a lot of cash. Like, wow, she's doing quite well for herself, considering she wasn't... I mean, she, she must have been earning okay to be a manager. But uh, we got a suspended sentence. So I was still living there, and she got made of... She was evicted. So I was evicted. So we were homeless. But we got given, I think, two months' notice... And eventually I found somewhere and, you know, just moved on from there. But that was, uh, that was my first eviction, I think. My first official eviction as, a, as an adult. First of a few. So that was, that was strange. I'm being accused in the, in the chip, in, not in chip shop, in the pub. They said, oh, we got to have more training. I didn't go to the training because I had New Year's dinner with my nan and granddad and my dad and, you know, sort of as... Because I missed Christmas because I was working. And they said, oh, if you don't turn up for training, don't turn up. I said, okay. I said, well, you can stick it. Stick it where the sun don't shine. And the manager said, what would you say? I said, nothing. Love you. And that was it. So... And then they were telling people that I got sacked for stealing. Can you imagine doing that the this day and age? I could have sued them. My good reputation. Unfortunately, well not this day and age, I'm too old now. I don't have a good reputation, but... At 18, you know, I was kind of starting out in life. In a little town. If you get a reputation of being an old tea leaf, people... Well, it could affect my chances of getting employment. So, it didn't, but it could have done. I think, luckily for me, it was a dive bar. It was the worst pub in the town. It was absolutely horrible place. Which is ironic, because it was the pub connected to a nice hotel. Weird, eh? But they had a separate bar for the hotel customers. This was for the locals. And it was a dark, dirty dive. It was... 
it, and it was just rough. It was it was the roughest pub in town. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. I forget. It's been closed for long. It's been closed for decades. The flying. Let's see if I can remember the the name of it. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, maybe not. No, it can't be that one. I thought it was a fly in something, but it can't because... Really? Marlboro? I think it is. It's not the same place as it was before anyway. Report closed. Reported closed. Reported. That's what it's saying on here. Uh, okay. That's not there. It was a, not a nice. The, the the hotel was okay, but it wasn't a nice pub. I remember I worked upstairs in on one of the function nights in a bar upstairs and it was lovely it was like really nice big function room of like weddings and kind of stuff like that but that pub the flying dirt bag or something I think it was called okay two weird experiences with females I say girls because I was I was a boy and they were girls at the time you know I was a teenager and they were teenagers and um, the first one was this girl, she was probably about 16, I don't know. And she came in and handed me a note. I thought, oh, okay, that's weird. I mean, uh, normally post, the postal services do that. But she handed me a note. Like, we're not, we're not a post office, we're the co-op. We, you know, but another. I was going to say that, but I realised perhaps it wasn't very funny. And then she ran out. So I read it, and it was a love note, a love letter, telling me how much she liked me, and she wanted to meet up, and she, there was her telephone number was on there and everything. And I'm thinking, okay, so she's seen me. This was during a day. She's seen me during a day multiple times. I kind of recognised her. She, she was regular coming in daily she was young probably like 15 16 i don't know i was 17 and i really don't recall but anyway i she might have been 17 i don't care i really don't know i don't know i didn't even get to st it literally i had a name i wish i kept the note the letter i wish i kept all this stuff but it's hard to do that with my lifestyle I moved around too much I was it's hard to keep it's much easier to keep hold of stuff when you're in one place or if you've got a storage or something anyway I I phoned her up I thought okay I phoned her up and I phoned her up the next day didn't call her in the evening, I called her in the morning. And I think it was a Saturday morning, I don't know. I think it was something, maybe... But anyway, she invited me around. I went around. She was doing her hair. And that was it. That was the entire relationship. She was doing her hair in the mirror, drying her hair with a hairdryer. And then talking to me and then lost interest. And I left. Never saw her again. And to this day, I don't know what happened. I really, genuinely don't know what happened. 
I mean, some could argue maybe if I'd taken her flowers. You know, maybe if I carried flowers when she opened the door, if I was holding a nice bouquet of flowers, maybe a box of chocolates when she opened the front door. Instead of a bag of poo. I was going <laughs> I was going through a period and I still do it now. I pick up dog poo. I do it with him, but I actually pick up dog poo. Other people's dog poo. Because it's not that much around, but if it's on the pavement and there's kids in the in the, the park and little kids fall over and I'm thinking, no, I wanna I don't wanna leave that there. So I'll pick it up and put it in a in with a bag. I use a bag now and I put it into the bin. I don't do it all the time, it's not my hobby. You know, I'm it's not it's not my favourite thing ever. It's just uh anyway. That was just really weird because she went to all to the effort of writing a note. And then she invited me around her house. It was the right telephone number. It was the right address. It's not like someone else was doing it just as a prank on her. I mean, I didn't check. Maybe it was April the 1st. Maybe it was an April Fool's joke. I don't know. But she'd seen me in the daytime as well. So it's not like I was... She'd met me in a really... I'll say a dark alley. That would be weird. But, you know, and fell for me. And she, she met me in a really dimly lit nightclub and didn't know what I actually looked like in the daytime. And then she saw me in the light for the first time. Because you see that in nightclubs, don't you? That's why you need to get out of there before the lights come on. Because sometimes nightclubs are just play the last song suddenly it's like floodlit and everyone can see what each other looks like and it's like oh really <laughs> like both 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 people look at each other thinking no <laughs> i spent the last two and a half hours dancing with this person really but usually it's internally but i used to, Internally, in like in your mind, I mean, I wasn't dancing internally, but I've actually literally had women just walk away from me, like declaring how much they like me. Oh, he's so lovely. Oh, I can't believe I've been coming to this nightclub for four years since I left school and never met anyone so nice as you. And you're so, you're so funny and you're soppy and you're. You're romantic and you're generous and you're a good dancer and you're just so just you just so perfect. The lights come on. See ya. Sometimes I don't just say see ya. Over once the lights came on and um she kicked me in the shin. So I looked down at my shin. I looked up and she was gone. Didn't even get to see what she looked like. It's rude. The other weird one I had. Again, very strange. And I liked this one. This one. This this girl. She was about the same age as me. Probably 17, 18. And she was working for the co-op. She worked in the next town. This is during a period, I think, when my boss got sacked. So there was short staff. So she came to help with the short staff, the shops, short staffedness, and we hit it off. We hit it off really good, really big. You know, laughing all day long together, and I fancied her, and she seemed to like me as well. At the end of the day. We swapped numbers. She gave me, not only that, she we arranged for me to go and see her. Gave me her address, everything. And I went to see her, I think it was on a Sunday. It might have been a Saturday. Probably a sun. it was a Sunday because, yeah, it was a Sunday. Because she was working on Saturday. In fact, it might have actually, it might have been Saturday that we were working together. We might have even worked two days together. 
so it wasn't just one day so we really liked it well I really liked her and I thought she really liked me and she was she was and still is the type of you know what I've always just you know the kind of person I would go for kind of we had our types and she was my type she had a head that's pretty much all I look for as long as she's got a head that's it and gives um, kindness and gives kindness out of, out of gives <laughs> gives um I remember when I was in the pub, all people were going about, oh, you got to give a good head. You got to, you got to put a, you know, the foam on top of the, of the beer. It's so important. It's got to, and you can't win because some people moan that their head's not big enough, you're not giving good enough head for the beer, the lager, or whatever it is. And other people moan saying there's too much head. You're giving too much head because. The bigger the head is, or the the more foam there is on top of the glass, the less lager or beer there is. Some people are like, oh, we don't. I don't want you to give me any head. I just want it. I want the the liquid to be right. I want a rim. I want it right to the rim. You know, they used to call it a rim job in the thing. So that we don't want. We don't want it overflowing over the tip. We want it right to the rim. And other people, the thing is, you can't carry that. You can't carry it. So they, they have to drink it first. They have to like have a mouthful um, before they could carry the rim job away. I mean, I suppose it stopped being a rim once they take it. But it's like, I'll have a rim job. I'll have a frothy, a nice... A lot. Or you give me head on that one, and uh, sometimes what is it? some of the weird names for the cocktails as well. I never understood that. You know, the, some of the girls in the kind of yeah, like sex on the beach. Like we literally we were opposite the beach. I got very confused. Like I would say, Are you talking about a drink? Or quite often at that point, the boyfriend would say, Oi, there's more girlfriend. What are you saying? I said, Did you, if you, you, what, what am I saying? Did you forget your hearing aid? I haven't got a hearing aid. Then someone would say, Who said that? And it would be the bloke without deadly glasses. But it's a different group. I didn't, they all look the same to me, drunk people. And so doing the rim, I never saw, even, see, it's like, okay, you don't want froth, but if you go and get a, um, I don't drink alcohol anymore, but I noticed that if you get, a, when I used to drink in pubs, if you get a rimmer, a, a rim one, like it goes right to the top, often it's because it's flat. Although there's something you could do, I found this. This is a way you can actually, um, you can use the rim to create a froth. So try this. But what I would say is, don't don't do the full rim job. Don't don't fill it right to the top. If you if you got, it might work with fizzy drinks, but I think it's lager. So if you put some lager in a in a in a, what would I drink now? If you put some, like a pint glass, and it's like three quarters full maybe, and what you do is you get another pint glass and you just rub the bottom, so you rub the bottom against the rim, okay? So you rub your bottom against the rim, so the bottom of that glass against the rim of the other glass on top, rub it around a few times, and then just bang it on top, not hard, not hard enough to break it, obviously, because that would just be wasteful. Bang it. Um, so you rub it around the rim and um, the bum, the bottom, around the rim, and just bang it. And it's like, it becomes frothy. Now, you'd, it would be better if you could see my hand movements, because I was really describing it. I'm quite 
proud of myself actually it was quite good the way I described that whole process but how did I get talking about beer I can't even remember anyway she this this girl I really liked in the co-op she she worked in different co-op I just if she'd have worked in my co-op like all the time I think I might have been able to have a relationship with her I don't know well I think clearly not because of what happened but so I turned up at her door it was a Sunday afternoon probably about two o'clock and I'm excited because I really like her I do really like her and super excited to I mean she could potentially be my first proper girlfriend I can't have had a proper girlfriend when I was 16 but you know not really well kind of I suppose yeah my first girlfriend after leaving school was I can't remember her name but did she have did she have red hair I think she might have done you know I think she might have done. Wow. I don't know. Anyway, she used to wear a hat. So, you might know her. But anyway, I was... I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd... Yeah, I did... I liked her. Anyway, she was a friend... Yeah, she was a friend of one of the girls that worked in the chip shop. That's how I met her. And I asked her out and she said yes. I was only practicing asking girls out. I didn't think the first one would say yes. I was kind of a bit stomached really. Stomached? Slumached? Sl sl Slumached? I couldn't exactly say to her, can you just hold on to that in case I can't find anyone better? Because <laughs> that would have been rude. Because, you know, I was, I, I was just going to, literally I was going to ask everybody. And my friend said, just ask everyone out. This is a girl said to me. So just ask every girl out that you that you think is nice. Ask them out. Get used to it. You get used to being told no. And it won't affect you so much. So the first person I asked out was her friend. And she said yes. I was like, oh. But she was, she was nice. I liked her. Anyway, um, this one in the next town in the co-op. We went there, I went there, and, you know, part of me, I was looking forward to seeing her at home, I didn't know, she she lived at home with her parents, I think, but there was no one around, her parents weren't there, and I thought we'd be going out, maybe, doing something, I don't know what, because I was 17, I didn't, there's uh, limitations there, I feel like go to... I didn't look 18, so I couldn't go drinking, really. I did sometimes. There was the odd pub that I could get into. Some pub owners didn't care about age as long as there was, they had money coming in. But, so I, I go in. In fact, I don't think she even answers the door. Her friend answered the door. I was like, first of all, like, oh, you look different. She said, no, it's not me. No, Tracy's in there. I'm Babs. I said, oh, okay. I don't know if that was her name. I just decided to call her Babs for the sake of the story, really. The weirdest thing happened. Not in a good way. God, blimey, that'd be great if it was in a good way. All I wanted to do was get to know the girl that I was visiting it wasn't about any kind of anything else but just spending time with her because I liked her have a laugh you know her friend would not stop from the second I got there she was grabbing me she was trying to flirt with me sit on my lap all kinds of stuff and in the end I just left and I don't know why she did it 
admittedly I could have probably tried to push her away, but it's it's hard, isn't it? It it was it was <laughs> no pun intended. It was hard because I'd never had that situation before to have someone that I didn't like. I didn't like this girl. I liked the one I was visiting, but a friend for some reason decided to. I guess give me a hard time. It wasn't. I don't think she liked me, but for some reason she was decided to get in the way between me and her friend. And it worked. And I said, I'll see you later then. I put up with it for about an hour. And it was, it was continuous, seriously. She was just, her, the, the girl I went to see was unhappy. She was, really not enjoying the whole thing I wasn't enjoying the whole thing the only one who's enjoying it was the other girl that was basically trying to well was she she succeeded in ruining everything and it was such a shame because this girl was one of the first times I ever met anyone that I got on with that well that like I just laughed all day long with when we were working together. We had the time of our lives. Well, I had the time of my life. It was so funny. It was, and even if we didn't, even if we hadn't had a, um, I think there was chemistry there. I think there was. And to be with someone that made me laugh, as well as someone that I was attracted to, was almost couldn't imagine anything better than that and it's happened hasn't it happened happened very often in my life and it was just like why why would someone do that like to try and get in the way of I mean unless and again it's not like we'd met in a dark dingy room and then suddenly she sees me in the sunlight and she's thinking uh, it wasn't anything like that because she'd spent all day with me during the daytime so she knew exactly what I looked like she knew what I smelt like she knew what I I say you know what I mean she'd been close to me so she knew that I wasn't going to introduce anything new to her senses I mean I didn't fart or well I probably did but you know generally I don't know, and I was slim back then. It's not like I turned up and had a different body to what she thought. You could see I was slim. There was, I mean, the the little jackets they gave me to wear at the co-op and the trousers. I mean, there's no way you could think that I was anything but really, really skinny. And I was. So there was no, there's no thinking, oh, he's a big, strong fellow. And then I turn up and she sees that I'm skinny. She knew I was skinny. I was skinny right from the start. That's what I'm still am skinny <laughs> in my head. I can't believe that my whole body probably weighed as much as my leg weighs now. It's ridiculous. Blind. I wonder if that's not, it's probably not true, is it? I left school. I was eight and a half stone when I left school. I'm literally double that nearly now. Crazy. Crazy, man. Right, again, I've been talking for way too long. But those very two strange events that happened. Oh, yeah, my peeve. My pet peeve. Parking on the pavement. I don't know why. It just bugs me. Not so much for myself, although sometimes, you know, if you, if you walk in your dog... Especially a little dog like him, or any any dog, but I don't want to walk in the road. If I'm walking with a little kid, which I'm not, but I have I've done in the past. Uh, I've had girlfriends with kids and stuff. I don't want to walk in the in, into the into the um, road with with a little kid. Or I don't want to. Or if I'm with my nan, when I was with my nan, I didn't want to have to walk in the road with her. 
I want to be able to stay on the pavement. Um, because sometimes I'd be with my nan, there'd be a car parked on the pavement, and there wasn't enough room for both of us to get through. So she'd have to walk on the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear anyway today I noticed that when I last took him out there was a car outside this place parked on the pavement and there was a car on the other side of the road parked on the pavement and I was like this is getting ridiculous so I was just, internally I was getting annoyed just not like hugely but it's like inconsiderate inconsiderate and I was like oh because I saw the one outside the house as I left the house took him out for the D-O-W-A-L-K which I can't say because he'll know and then on the way back saw that other car and I thought Arr. pushed me over my edge anyway as I'm walking home so I'm walking away from the car. I hear some sound and I notice, I look back, Finney's looking, he, he tells me whenever there's anything happening in the street. And a bloke was coming out of the house helping an elderly person into the back of the car. Um, and I thought, oh. I felt guilty. Because they... They were parked on the pavement because they were helping a disabled person to get into the car. My concern is for people that are disabled. You know, that's why I like people parking on the pavement, those in wheelchairs, not wheelchairs. Yeah, wheelchairs. P not p push, push chair, prams, wheelchairs. Yeah, that's the right word, isn't it? Um, is how they're supposed to, it's not fair that they have to get into the road and that. If I ever have to use a wheelchair, I'm gonna I'm gonna force my way through those gaps, and and honestly, I will. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be one of those really grumpy old men <laughs> instead of a grumpy middle aged man. Well, I felt guilty when I saw that. I felt guilty, and I'm walking home. And even when I get upstairs. I'm sitting down on the sofa and I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking about the lady and seeing her being helped into the car and I still I still had that feeling of guilt I had that guilty feeling sitting here and I thought I wish I hadn't let down the tyres too late now though and I just got to move on la da 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 la da 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 by the way Hawaii Five-O the tune came to me and you got the scenery of all these waves and people surfing beautiful sunny and you've got um uh, Hawaii Five O, Mister Hawaii Five O, there as well with his grease back hair, looking lovely, and it's like it just came to me last night, the the tune. So I couldn't think of it yesterday when I was doing the podcast episode. So it kind of brings us to the end. I don't know if you heard him going. <coughs> so I'm going to go. It's. Uh, I want to have an early night tonight and get up early hours of the morning to watch the boxing because, 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 because it is Canelo against Mungui and I predict that Mungui is going to win. That's what I predict. So 
There's your prediction. Yep, that's why I predict. And he won't be favourite. Canelo will be favourite. But I think Ungui, Mungui will win the fight. I'm not going to say how. I just think he's going to be the winner at the end. I would probably say... I would probably say by decision, you know. Or the second thing would be a draw. But I think it's I think he's gonna win by decision because he's been shown how to do it by uh what's his name? Light heavyweight champion. You know? The thing is, Canelo, he's, unless he, I mean, recently he hasn't been a volume, a volume uh, fighter anymore. He, he sort of waited, wanting, waiting to get that, like, knockout. But with Mungia, Mungui, I don't think he's going to get that. And he's, he's going against someone 10 years younger and a former world champion. So, you know, it's, it's, I think, I think, I think Mungui will be the undisputed super middleweight champion of the world by about six o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, yes. UK time, of course. UK time. Probably about 11, 11, 11, 15, 11, 30. US time, depending on where you live. So that's it. Uh, uh, I, no, 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 no. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. <laughs>